1. The Sun's position in the Milky Way. The Sun is part of our galaxy, the Milky Way, which is a large, barred spiral galaxy. The Milky Way is composed of billions of stars, gas, dust, and dark matter, and it spans approximately 100,000 to 120,000 light years in diameter. The Sun resides in the Orion Arm, or Orion Spur, which is one of the spiral arms of the Milky Way. This arm is between two larger arms, the Perseus Arm and the Sagittarius Arm. Galactic Center and Solar Orbit the Sun is located about 27,000 light years from the center of the galaxy. The galactic center is thought to harbor a supermassive black hole, Sagittarius A. Our Sun, like all stars in the Milky Way, orbits the galactic center, but it does so in a slightly elliptical orbit rather than a perfect circle. The orbital speed of the Sun around the galactic center is approximately 828,000 km per hour, 514,000 miles per hour and it takes around 225 to 250 million years for the Sun to complete one full orbit. This journey is known as a galactic year. The solar system's motion. While the Sun orbits the center of the galaxy, our entire solar system, along with countless other stars and their planets, moves through space. The Sun's path is not linear. It also experiences a wobble or oscillation above and below the galactic plane. This movement is caused by gravitational forces from other stars, molecular clouds, and other galactic structures. The oscillation completes a cycle roughly every 30 million years. Influences on life on Earth The Sun's position in the Milky Way has a long-term impact on the Earth. For instance, as the solar system moves through different regions of the galaxy, it passes through areas with varying levels of cosmic radiation, which could influence life on Earth. The varying proximity to dense regions of stars, nebulae, and even potential supernova remnants could affect the evolution of life over billions of years. 2. Finding communities interested in astronomy. Astronomy, with its vast scope and exploration of the universe, has captivated people for centuries. While the interest in space may be niche in some places, there are many ways to find like-minded individuals passionate about stargazing and scientific discovery astronomical societies and clubs. Around the world, there are many astronomy clubs and societies that host regular meetings, lectures, and public viewing events. These clubs are often open to all levels, from beginners to advanced astronomers. For example, clubs like the Royal Astronomical Society in the UK or the American Astronomical Society in the US provide resources, events, and networking opportunities. Local clubs might organize star parties where members gather with their telescopes to observe celestial events. University outreach programs. Many universities host public outreach programs related to astronomy. For example, they might organize events like public lectures, planetarium shows, and night sky observations. These programs offer an opportunity to engage with academics, students, and enthusiasts who have a deep interest in space science. Online communities. The Internet has enabled the creation of large, global communities of astronomy enthusiasts. Platforms like Reddit, with subreddits such as R, Astronomy, R, Space, and R, Telescopes, provide a space where people from all over the world share their knowledge, experiences, and questions about the night sky. Social media platforms like Twitter and Instagram are also great for following popular astronomers and space scientists who share breathtaking images and discoveries. Citizen Science Projects Many online platforms allow you to get involved in citizen science projects related to astronomy. For example, projects like Zooniverse allow people to participate in research efforts by classifying galaxy images or helping track asteroids. These kinds of initiatives not only help you contribute to real scientific work but also connect you with other participants who share your enthusiasm for space. Skywatching and stargazing events. Whether it's a total lunar eclipse, a meteor shower, or a solar eclipse, these events draw many people to take a closer look at the sky. Many observatories or astronomy centers host stargazing nights where telescopes are available for public use, and experts are on hand to guide observations. Meteor showers like the Perseid meteor shower or Geminid meteor shower are particularly popular for group stargazing. 3. What happens if an astronaut throws something towards Earth? In space, throwing an object is not like it is on Earth. 
Due to the unique environment of microgravity aboard the International Space Station, ISS, actions like throwing objects follow different physical laws compared to what we experience on Earth. Objects motion in orbit. The ISS, like everything on it, including the astronauts, is orbiting the Earth at an astonishing speed of about 28,000 kilometers per hour, 17,500 miles per hour. Everything on the ISS is in a continuous state of free fall toward Earth but is also moving fast enough horizontally to stay in orbit instead of falling directly to the ground. If an astronaut throws an object, the object retains the same orbital velocity as the ISS itself. Trajectory of the object. The object won't simply fall to Earth immediately. Instead, it will continue in orbit around Earth at nearly the same speed as the ISS. It may drift either ahead or behind the station depending on the direction of the throw. Essentially, the object would stay in the same orbital path unless acted upon by another force, like atmospheric drag or the gravity of the Earth or the ISS. Potential hazards. While the object might not hit Earth immediately, it can still be a potential hazard. Even a small object moving at orbital velocity can cause significant damage if it strikes something else in orbit, like a satellite, another astronaut, or the ISS itself. Over time, the object might experience atmospheric drag at lower altitudes, which can cause it to slow down, lose altitude, and eventually re-enter Earth's atmosphere. The friction would cause the object to burn up in a fiery re-entry if it's small enough, or if it's large, it might survive the entry and cause a hazard upon landing. Space debris. This is a concern for astronauts and space agencies. There is an increasing amount of space debris in Earth's orbit, which includes defunct satellites, broken parts of rockets, and other discarded objects. While most of this debris is too small to cause harm, Larger pieces could be dangerous to both operational spacecraft and satellites. 4. How big is the void we live in? The universe is vast, and much of it is empty space, or, voids, that stretches over unimaginable distances. Voids are the regions between galaxy clusters and superclusters that contain very few galaxies and are mostly devoid of matter. Understanding the size and structure of these voids gives us insight into the grand architecture of the cosmos. Cosmic voids. These are huge expanses of space that span anywhere from 10 million to 100 million light years. Voids are not completely empty. They contain some faint galaxies, gas, and dark matter. But the density of matter in these regions is extremely low compared to denser regions like galaxy clusters. One of the largest known voids is the Boötes Void, sometimes called the Great Void, which is about 330 million light years in diameter. Cosmic Structure The universe's structure is often described as a cosmic web. This cosmic web is composed of vast networks of galaxies and galaxy clusters that are connected by long filaments of dark matter and gas. Between these filaments lie the voids, massive, nearly empty spaces that separate the filaments. The voids and filaments form the overall shape of the universe on the largest scales. Size of the universe. The observable universe is estimated to be about 93 billion light years across. However, the actual size of the entire universe is unknown. It could be infinite. What we observe is limited by the distance that light has traveled since the Big Bang, about 13.8 billion years ago. The expansion of the universe is also stretching the distances between galaxies, causing the voids to become even larger over time. Why do voids exist? Voids form because of cosmic expansion. After the Big Bang, gravity gradually caused matter to clump together into galaxies, stars, and clusters. Areas between these clusters of galaxies have fewer particles and are thus less dense, leading to the formation of voids. Over billions of years, the expansion of the universe has stretched these voids further apart. Impact on life on Earth. While voids are fascinating from a cosmic perspective, 